Alabama A&M for the first time. In fact, the first ever meeting between the Tigers and a school located in Huntsville, Alabama that went Division I in 1999 and has one SWAC title to their credit. That was back in 2006. And we've got some technical issues in the arena at the start. Alabama A&M, for their part, certainly in a rebuilding project under their second year head coach Alabama A&M team with players like Cameron Alford a freshman out of Brownsburg Indiana He's a very strong guard at 6'1 200 pounds looks like they've gotten things worked out with the clock and five freshmen contributing for them one of those a little bit nicked up they weren't sure of his ability but he's got the ball right now as Cameron Tucker nurses a hamstring injury coming in Bulldogs team that's off to an 0-4 start this season. All games on the road from the left wing. Cameron Alford unable to knock that one down. You mentioned the fact that Clemson was playing their fifth straight home game. This is the fifth straight away game for Alabama A&M. And Alabama A&M, a team that opens its home slate coming up Monday night against Troy. But, yeah, they've been playing some good folks, too, away from home. Dawes, his first attempt for the Tigers. Clemson coming in. 33% on the year beyond the arc. And after that rough patch against Virginia Tech in the opener on three-pointers, they've been much better. Certainly have, especially the last game. E.J. Williams, their freshman center, had it. Gave it away. Back out high it goes. They'll reset. T.J. Parham now gives it away to Tucker. Shot clock under 10. Newman flies in for the rebound off the Tucker miss. Tucker now 2 out of 12 so far in the early season on his three-point drop. Early going, Clemson switching everything on uh, the defensive end. Sims leaving it short. Amir Sims, one of those players, Brad Brownell says he actually may try to reduce his minutes a little bit. He thinks that's been impacting his perimeter game. We'll get more into that as we continue here tonight. Lob inside. Williams tried the soft turnaround. The freshman out of Middletown, Ohio, and it'll go the other way. Dawes, no look, and then Sims kicks out left wing, and on the way, Tevin Mack, Tigers' top scorer, comes off a combined 35 points in his past two games. He's been stroking them from three. That's a great job of passing the basketball, too, which is, I thought, one of Clemson's uh, very best uh, characteristics in their win against Detroit Mercer. They had 20 assists in 30 on 31 field goals. Mack knocking it away. They'll work on the perimeter. Right wing this time, and Parham can't get it to go. Mack will bring it up court. Brad Brownell so impressed with how quickly Tevin Mack is getting rid of the basketball when he shoots it. He does have a quick release, that's for sure, and he can stroke it from three and put it on the floor. John Newman. There's Scott, and he'll head to the line. Curran Scott, six out of eight so far in free throws, so he steps in. If they desperately need Chase Hunter tonight, he would probably be available. They'd rather not risk it with the road trip coming up, and you see the foul the first of the game, and it goes against T.J. Parham. That was a really good job with a very quick one uh, rhythm dribble by uh, Curran Scott right there, and he goes to the line for two. Probably know the backstory on Curran Scott. He began his career at Charlotte. And then moves significantly closer to home. He's from just north of Oklahoma City. And he ended up playing at Tulsa. And here he is in a graduate season for the Tigers. Spent the past three years with the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. Can't get the second free throw to go down. Bulldogs come in shooting 45, or I should say shooting 36% from the floor in just 26% beyond the arc. Drive inside, bodies fly, and good job that time by Dawes holding his ground with a drive by Tucker. Great defensive position by Alameda Dawes. Newman using the size, able to get past the defender, Hicks, but couldn't finish. Alford on the drive, and the Bulldogs still without any points here. Three and a half minutes in. Sims, the crossover. We saw him score like that the other day against Detroit Mercy. Great job protecting the basketball with his body right there, using the left hand. 
Sims among the Tigers scoring leaders at just under 11 points a game. On the left wing, Tucker. Remember, he's been bothered by a hamstring issue. Parham with the lob. Williams, the big freshman. And firing out front and missing badly. Parham, 33% home the gold at the World University game. So he was learning literally on the job, but with the offseason that continued to prepare. It's one guy that Brad Brownell is very happy with how he's been able to get into the flow. The Tigers will now see a zone out of an Alabama A&M team that uses a variety of defenses. That time they forced the turnover. So almost exclusively 1-3-1 out of Detroit Mercy in Sunday afternoon's game. Brandon Miller on the floor. That's him with the ball. He'll give it away to Hicks. Can do something with it. Jalen Johnson, another one of their freshmen, and the lefty hook is left short. That's just another example of great the great defensive play of Amir Sims. He has been exceptional on the defensive end this this year so far. Bulldogs 0 for 7 from the field so far. Sims inside the arc and off the floor. Alfred. And we've got a a legal screen away from the ball. Jalen Johnson with the first personal for him, and that's two as a team on Alabama a &M. And right there, a little bit too much contact on Alamir Dawes. Yeah, Jalen's another one of those freshmen that's uh, got to learn it's a little different game than what he's been playing. Newman tried to get it inside. Ball was deflected, but Mack to Sims. It's a great save by Tevin Mack right there. Uh, John uh, Newman the third has got to learn uh, there's passing lanes out there. We're, we're throwing the ball by people, through people. Miller hitting the first points of the game, just an 18% three-point shooter before he launched that one. But junior out of Huntsville, grew up not too far from their campus at Alabama A&M. Makes it an 8-3 game. Dawes the second time. Scott halfway down. It comes out. Rebound to Alabama A&M's T.J. Parham. Baseline drive. A spin and a scoop. Nice job by Cameron Alford. Their leading scorer just under 13 a game. Freshman out of Brownsburg, Indiana. And now a little bit of a run after an 8-0 deficit. For the Bulldogs. Sims on the left wing Dawes. Alamir Dawes off to a 7 for 21 start in his college career beyond the arc. I've always said it's much easier to shoot the three pointer when the, the pass comes from the inside out. Nice move to the basket. And Alford showing you how he had 13 points against Miami of Ohio the other day and the eventual loss, but. He was double figures the game before that at Cincinnati. Dawes from way downtown that time. And it bounces out of bounds. Coach Brownell, uh, I don't think, was happy with that shot. It was a little quick. So good job by Mack first to keep the possession and then to find a man underneath. That really was. Great job of staying after it and uh, it delivered the, the pass on time with authority. Miller running the point since that last time out in place of Cameron Tucker. Tried to give it a go, that hamstring issue that the Alabama AM freshman guard had. Maybe slowing them down a bit. Sims with the size advantage. Shot clock under 10. From the corner, launched by Evan Wiley, who just checked in. And the rebound comes down to the Tigers. Kayvon Moore just got on the court. Dawes, another try. And that time he rattles it home. Two of his past three. Have gone down for Alamir Dawes and Clemson out to a seven-point lead once more. Pretty good confidence displayed by the freshman. Tigers with size defending the point so far. Left wing Parham transferred in from Wisconsin Green Bay for a final season. Shot clock at four. From way outside that time, Miller 
can't get it to go. Scott and the Tigers push the pace. Moore. Now he tried to get it inside to Sims, knocked away, and here comes Alford. Alford shakes defenders through traffic, feet inside. No, the first time for Parham, and on his way back up, he's fouled, and that'll be the first in the game against the Clemson team. Alamir Dawes, he's been stroking it from the outside. Tigers up by seven. With Jim Davis, Pete Gannity with you back in Little John Coliseum. Hunter Tyson about to check in, coming off that big game on Sunday, the career-high 20 points. 5 of 10 from three-point range, and I'm sure Coach Brownell uh, sees this 2-3 zone that Alabama A&M is, is using now, and uh, Tyson can certainly bust that zone. Tyson at 37% beyond the arc so far over the handful of games the Tigers have played. Mack leads the way at 41%. Long inbound try. There's Scott to come away with the steal. Another one for Curran, his second as a Tiger. And just like that, Tyson. And they'll count it. Didn't take him long to get in the scoring column, but give uh, Curran Scott the credit there with the steal and the assist. And Tyson is a guy who, as a freshman last year, he tried to score in close. He's not just a fellow who goes outside at 6'7", 6'8", and tries to create matchup issues. He can score inside and out, and he's a better free throw shooter than that. <laughs> Moore trying to add to the nine-point lead, biggest of the game so far for Clemson, off of that miss by Tyson. Kevin Wiley out high, he'll give the ball away for Alabama A&M. Driving inside, Cameron Tucker, left wing it goes, not going to fall that time for Alfred. And will kick it to Newman, his buddy from their AAU days before they came to Clemson together. There's Scott doing one of the things that they hope he can contribute. He was 3 of 10 beyond the arc before the game began. Yeah, just a little thing, Pete, uh, I'd like to point out is the last few possessions against the zone, they've been doing a great job of faking, pass faking one way and throwing the other. So good job of faking. Tigers 4 out of 7 beyond the arc in the game. Contact inside. And another offensive foul against Alabama a and um, And this one on Cameron Alford. John was sitting there waiting on him, without a doubt. There's no question about that call. Four team fouls. Good job by Newman inside. Scrappy play. Hey, John's been very consistent. Every game he's been right there, double figure scoring and uh, doing a great job. And again, the scoring at times, they really haven't needed the scoring. That guy is one reason, because Hunter Tyson continues to feel it from the outside. Five out of ten beyond the arc. Sunday, and he's off to a good start here tonight. Tucker back on the floor, despite what we were told was a hamstring issue. Wiley feeds inside. Williams lost the handle. Freshman will kick it back out. That time, more off his feet, and the foul will go against the... Stay on the floor, especially on the perimeter. Stay on the floor. So Hunter Tyson, again, a matchup issue out on the wing, but a guy, when you're squared up like that, you're just aiming for that middle part of the net that's hanging down, and he stroked it. I guarantee you, he spent some time on his own in this gym shooting that rock, I can promise you. You don't shoot the basketball like that without spending, getting extra reps. Tigers going this stretch without Tevin Mack or Amir Sims on the floor, and that was something Brad Brownell was hoping to do with the road trip coming up. And a handful of games to be played out in Las Vegas during Thanksgiving week. Kerwin Scott getting his first Clemson start, and this is the kind of weapon they think he can be as the season goes on. That was a good job of ball reversal right there. And Makes for a long closeout by the defense. That was a great job reversing the basketball and knocking it down by Scott. Lob inside, knocked away Jemison, scrapping for the ball. Tyson ahead, Mack! How about that, my friend? Bunch of acrobats playing some hoops. The Tigers build on their biggest lead, a 17-point advantage. Travel the call, the turnover, and that'll be number six. So far for Alabama AM and 
They come into this game doing a decent job with the basketball. They give it up 13 times a game. So scrappy play and a pretty good hoist. That's a pretty Mike good Tyson. catch by Mac going to get that basketball too. Mac now with five points. Alamir Dawes on those two made threes. Leaves the Tigers with six. Mac stroking the three. 6'6 grad student. Played his high school ball at Greer in Columbia from there to Texas, then to Alabama, and now here for one season of college hoops for the guy who was shown to be a pure scorer. Average under 10 points a game last year at Alabama. That's going to maybe double in a Clemson uniform. Thrown away, Garrett Hicks. Another turnover. Four minute, 19 second scoring drought for the Bulldogs. Tigers have opened this up. Nice job getting it inside, and Jemison able to finish on the feed from Kerr and Scott. That's that veteran leadership from uh, Scott at the guard position. Alabama AM, the average just 58.5 points a game, and the turnovers beginning to mount, and many of them are unforced errors as that one's thrown away. Good look by Scott. He can play some point. He can also be a shooter. And Jemison, who a really good note in the time he's been on the court, he hasn't picked up a foul yet. And that has been the story so far this season. He's in for 10 seconds before you know it. The first stat that he registers is a personal foul. But the sophomore who comes from Alabama, continue to grow in this Clemson program. Fade away that time. No by Moore. Jemison, Hill, or Mack rather. And Mack will get the roll. You're going to count it? They will, says Roger Ayers. Nice job. Good hustle by Tevin Mack. Trey Jemison with the offensive rebound. And Trey's best basketball is in front of him, I can assure you. Good job. Good body control. And the finish. Mack does a lot of things well. Comes into the ball game having made two free throws and only three trips on the season. 32 to 7. From way outside. Not going to happen again for Parham. They've made just one three-point attempt in eight tries. Have the Bulldogs. Newman. And the rebound. Coming down to Miller. Here comes Alabama a &M. Parham knocked away. Good job by Newman once again. Mack going to lead the break. Three on two. Tyson. The kick. Mack thought about a three. Good recovery defensively. A little give and go. And inside, quick hands by Garrett Hicks. His fifth steal of the season. Parham on the drive. Contact going to the hole. And an offensive foul is called. And Hunter Tyson showing scrappy play as well. I can promise you that's going to earn him more and more playing time because Brad Brownell loves that defensive play. Here in Little John Coliseum, the Clemson Tigers close out a season opening five game homestand, taking on the Bulldogs of Alabama AM out of the swag. Hi, everybody, and welcome in with Jim Davis, Pete Gannity with you, a Tigers team that's really picked up the scoring over the past couple of games. They certainly have, Pete. In the last game against Detroit Mer uh, Mercy, they had three players with 18 points or more. Now First the time that's happened in more than 10 years. In a 22-point win on Sunday. Now, tonight, they're going to turn to one of their veterans and newcomers in the starting lineup. Curran Scott will get his first start in place of the injured freshman Chase Hunter, who has a foot issue. Kern Scott's a newcomer, but he's a veteran. He's a graduate transfer from Tulsa, and uh, they need that veteran leadership in the backcourt. Tigers head coach Brad Brownell trying to get his team a fourth straight win. He is closing in on the all-time Clemson record for victories held by Cliff Ellis at 177. So Brad ties it with five more victories. The 10th year head coach facing Alabama A&M for the first time. In fact, the first ever meeting between the Tigers and a school located in Huntsville, Alabama, that went Division I in 1999 and has one SWAC title to their credit. That was back in 2006. And we've got some technical issues in the arena at the start. Alabama A&M, for their part, certainly in a rebuilding. Mack 
Little dribble, feed, Jamison. Oh, nice job reversing that time for Trey Jamison, who may know some folks who've gone to Alabama A&M over the years. The Tigers sophomore out of Birmingham played at Hoover High. Left wing, Miller. And there's Dawes pulling it down. Oh, what a great find that time. Little pump fake, and Jemison finishes. Almost traveled, but John Newman give him the assist. He fumbled a basketball, but his feet did not move. He, so they did, he didn't walk. I like uh, Jemison on the defensive end. He's taking some leadership down there and pointing out defenders. And He's seven feet. He had the knee issue coming out of high school. Last year, you could tell he was out of shape. They've got him in great shape. A guy like that... He, Needs to pretend he's about 6'2". Just play with scrappiness because he just hasn't developed the offensive game once they start playing the power seven type opponents. And Tyson can't get it. I just don't think that at this point he's going to be a reliable guy you throw it into the post to. Why not just let him get out there, scrap, right. hang around, get some right. rebounds. And get those in-close baskets, make the dunks, and, and be, the, be the force on the defensive end. That's huge. Brown. And like let's right see. There. it'll be a held ball. And we'll take a timeout. John Newman, he's been made three as a Tiger. And then back in defensive transition. That 51 points matches the best in a first half in the Brad Brown L era. His best half of basketball turned in by a team. 56 points. So fade away from the baseline. Can fall for Hicks. And Tyson taking it off the floor. Scott off the pump fake. Good find. Tyson out high. Can't get that one to go. And Hunter Tyson now one out of two beyond the arc. Other end, Miller. Been a tough night beyond the arc for anybody shooting threes for Alabama AM. They're just four out of 14. Newman. Looks like a zone Alabama AM is using. Tyson, smooth touch that time. A couple of threes off the bench. Keep in mind the 20 he had the other day, that came off the pen, bench, and that was pretty good effort. Marquise Reed, in coming back from injury, came off the bench last season, and he was the first to do it since Reed did, but for the most part, you get 20 off the bench, you take it, regardless of the player. Without a doubt. You see the shot clock and game clock differential. Feed inside, stolen by Sims. Came in with five in the early going. Under 10 to go. Tigers playing for a final shot. Moore will force it. Can't get it to go, and that's how we arrive at halftime here at Little John Coliseum. Brad Brownell looking for all of the final. Nearly a month. They won't be back in here until December 15th in that rivalry showdown against the Gamecocks. Sims defended by the big freshman. E.J. Williams gives to Dawes. Little hop, skip, and a jump, but he can't finish. And rebound pulled off the glass by Garrett Hicks. Hicks out of Madison, Alabama, and knocked away that time. Good job by Clemson. To get the ball back. Max pass ahead, deflected. Sims now Scott from the corner. The rebound, Cameron Alford, their top scorer, a freshman. He had four in the first half, came in averaging about 13. That's him with the ball. Winning their conference tournament. Getting that automatic bid. Alamir Dawes. Very well-rounded game. The Newark, New Jersey native. And showing the ability to come in and make an early impact for this Clemson team. He's in double figures now with 10. He's getting better every game. Pete. Trying to force the action that time and doing so. T.J. Parham. First points of the game. He was 0 for 4 before he made that. He averages nearly 11. Playing at his fourth school. He had a cup of coffee at Army. He never really 
was with them during a season in basketball. Then he went to Wisconsin Green Bay after attending a junior college. And now with Alabama A&M for one season. Look at the hustle by Hicks. Forcing the turnover. Drives in on Sims and he'll head to the line. Really good scrappy play by Madison, Alabama native. Tigers moments ago getting their first points of the second half. A little stop and pop by Alamir Dawes. A nice mid-range pull up. A good part of his game. Once again coming off the screen set by Amir Sims. Picks the season. And attempted just two free throws before the game began. Was his first attempt of the night. Thompson just three personal fouls in the first half. First on Sims. Here in the second half is the first on either team. Newman and Dawes out there on the wing. Newman good first half with seven points. Mack thought about the jumper. Jemison instead. A little spin move. A lefty hook for the big fellow. This has got to be a career high for Jemison. I don't know what is. Uh... He had four against Duke as a freshman. And tonight he has doubled that. Eight points so far for Jemison. Williams. Freshman who actually spent a year of prep school in Atlanta before arriving in Alabama a Newman the crossover, Mack from the left wing. Here comes Tucker. Williams, that's a big part of what they do in the half court, is feeding inside to the big man. 6'10. Nice job by the seven footer, Jemison, to deny. Good discipline by uh, Trey. Off the steal. Moore back to defend for Clemson, but able to sneak Aaron underneath Aaron. him is Alford. And what constitutes about as good of a run for Alabama A&M in this game. Moore. Tigers working the perimeter. Dawes. Oh, changes hands in the air and he'll head to the line. On the blow by Alamir Dawes, a chance at a three point play. The foul goes against EJ Williams. First team he has him. done a really good job tonight of getting to the basket. Dawes, first trip tonight to the line. 80% in his Clemson career coming into the night. And building on his numbers, now 13 points. Mack leads all scorers for the Tigers with 14. Spin move inside, and a nice one at that by Park. Native of Chicago, his claim to fame is in high school, he played on a very good team with Tyler Ulis, a former Kentucky star. More around a Jemison screen. Thought about the dish, and Mack coming in. Oh, he would have loved the Thunder Jam, but pushes it up and in. He's got 16. They almost pulled Jemison's pants down that time when he rolled to the basket. Hicks, the dish. From the corner, it'll go. Nice find, nice Cameron smooth Tucker. stroke. And Cameron Tucker able to hit that three-pointer. He's got two in the game. Came into the contest struggling beyond the arc. Just two out of 11. Newman. Newman now three out of six from the field tonight. And we set Tucker out high. Try to get it inside. Deflected nicely. Moore runs it down. No look on the wing. Dawes. Alamir Dawes. Three for five from downtown. Tigers continue good work beyond the arc. They're 11 out of 21. 52% for a Clemson team that came in at 33% from long range. 
Give Kayvon Moore some credit for the good hands on defense and then uh, leading the break, finding it. Dawes. 6'10 Williams, seven footer Jemison. Lefty feed, misses everything. He will be a force in this league, though, that is not one known for its post players. Newman fouled, gives us a break in the action. Tigers coming out of the lock and they came in with. In terms of three pointers so far this season. Tigers able to hit their fair share against both Detroit Mercy and Colgate. Games they needed to make threes. And the timeout. Feet inside. Jemison reaching double figures and the basket still rocking. And what a great lead pass over the top to Jemison by Alamir Dawes. From way out front. It's not going to fall that time for Alfred. Tigers with the rebound. Thompson has led by as many as 37 so far this evening. Jemison feeling it. Oh, and he had it knocked away. And a good job by Jalen Johnson at 6'7", defending the big man. Other end. Catch and shoot and draining the tray is T.J. Park. T.J. Park. Chicago native. Ball knocked off the leg of Curran Scott. Looks for the Bulldogs thought that should have been a backward violation. Trying to feed down low. Jemison, the entry pass can be difficult, but when you get it to the big fella and he catches it, he can do a whole bunch with it. Now that was a bounce pass. Now it's very difficult for a seven-footer to get down there and dig that out, but I'm sure that the coaching staff at Clemson have worked on that with uh, Jemison. And you prefer the bounce pass as the entry pass instead of the lob. Tell me why. I do indeed, because the defender's strength is up, up high with their hands and arms, and uh, it's tough to get down there and defend that bounce pass. Wouldn't go for Dawes, rebound by Johnson. Brandon Miller. Jalen Johnson, Manuel High in Indianapolis, drives the lane, no, good defense again by Jemison. Very active, as active as we've probably seen him in his two seasons in a Clemson uniform. Dawes. And the foul. Let's see if he's set up beyond the arc. Foul goes against Brandon Miller. So Jemison, as we noted, active. That one swatted off the glass. Probably wouldn't have gone down anyway, but Jemison coming in without a block on the season. And at least two in the game so far. And that, Alamir that, Dawes. That led to a fast break going the other way off that block. He's looking freshman guard for the Tigers, and Dawes. Missing there, one out of two tonight, but 80%. If you haven't watched the Tigers play this year, you may not be familiar with the fact that his godfather is Shaheen Holloway, who was a great player at Seton Hall and was in here last year coaching St. Peter's in the game. They almost came in and upset Clemson. Jemison going to get a breather, but playing extended minutes so far tonight. Trey Jemison gets a rest having played. 14 minutes so far. And that's way up from what he's been averaging. Just activated on the roster for Clemson is Wells Hogue. He had been a manager, but they went ahead and uh, brought him off the practice squad, if you will. He is a Greenville native, played at Greenville High, which has had a good basketball tradition. It's got to be a thrill for him to get onto the court tonight. 69-35 our score. Under 12 to play. Left wing Tucker knocked out of bounds, and it'll go the other way. Another turnover for Alabama A&M. Those have mounted tonight. They're getting close to 20. Wells Hogue and the Tigers back after this. And uh, exactly right. Well, I'm not sure what his culinary preferences are, but uh, yes, we saw various articles that were of no interest. So Wells Hogue, he had the ball, the team manager who the Tigers have activated. A Clemson team, we said at the top of the broadcast, getting healthier, although Chase Hunter resting tonight a foot injury. He could play if it was necessary, but as you see by the score, that's not the case. The Tigers hoping 
by December 15th to get big Jonathan Bear back from his knee injury. Then after Christmas, get Clyde Trapp back in there. And then this is a ball club that can go 10, 11, maybe even 12 deep. After the steal, Alabama A&M able to get the answer. Brandon Miller from downtown. Miller now with six points in the game. He's one of the two juniors that adds a bit of a veteran presence to this team that features six freshmen. Nine turnovers for Clemson now. Look at Hogue driving the lane. His first basket in a Clemson uniform. And the bench explodes down there. Happy for him. Almost slipping that time. Tucker through the lane. Hoisting it up there to no avail. Alford on the run out more. Tyson, the catch and shoot. And it's Ho who scraps for the rebound. Folks want to see a jump. Remember last year there was some great walk on moments for little John. A rainbow! Wow! Coming off a great flare screen by Amir Sims. It's a wide open three look. Ho, best shooting percentage on the team through two attempts. Five points, other end. And that one splashes for Miller. Adding to his night. And he now has nine points, and that leads the Alabama AM team. Curran Scott can't get that one to go down. He's now one for four beyond the arc, getting a star tonight. A fire on the other end by Miller. Seems to be one and done for Alabama A&M. They are eight out of 20 from long range. Scott looking to feed inside. Double team Kane. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay in the Clemson end as Alford went for the steal. So Wells Hogue bringing back memories of Lyles Davis, who <laughs> had folks enamored in Little John last season. That one from way downtown. You know, Brad Brownell, I, I don't see him saying that was too long of a jumper. He likes to see it happen. And... The teammates do, too. Absolutely. Great way for a manager who's contributed so much to this program, and now they've activated him, and he can add some depth, especially helping practice more so than he had been. Sims gave a look at the shot clock. He'll take the elbow jumper. And now saying before the game, he wants to try to maybe pull back on some of the Amir Sims minutes. Thinks that'll help his outside shooting, obviously, with fresher legs you're a better shooter and, and in conjunction with Trey Jemison uh, emerging a little bit here tonight he'll have the opportunity to do that nothing doing for Brandon Houston here come the Tigers Clemson 5 and 0 all time against teams from the Southwestern Athletic Conference most recently playing Texas Southern they played them twice over a three year span look at Sims he was thinking about the old tomahawk dunk but and able to get the finger roll to fall. Miller on the other end. Brandon Miller at seven points against Miami of Ohio on Saturday, but has double figures here tonight. Heating it up. Miller now with 12. First double figure scorer for Alabama AM. Around the sim screen, Scott. And they should say that's on the way up. Foul is on Garrett Hicks. foul on Garrett Hicks. Brandon Miller scored 19 against Tulane for his career high last year. Turn Scott going to the line. He's one for two tonight. Scott from Edmond, Oklahoma, just north of Oklahoma City. And it's interesting. You know, he came home from Charlotte after trying college basketball there. Went and played at Tulsa, and folks saying, well, Tulsa's in the northeastern part of Oklahoma. Oklahoma City sits there in the center. But when you're out near Edmond, you're only about 50, about a 50, 55-minute drive on the interstate from the metro Tulsa area. That's how far out Edmond is as a suburb to Oklahoma City. And you're only about 50 minutes or so from Stillwater. So if you're an Oklahoma State alum and you end up living in Oklahoma City, you're probably living out on the north side of town. You're almost the same distance living out in Edmond 
to Norman on the south side of town where University of Oklahoma is located. This doesn't have anything to do with anything, Pete, but I believe it has Norman everything to do with Kerr and Scott in a 75-44 game. I, I believe that our former wrestling coach at Clemson was from Edmond, Oklahoma. I can imagine that. It's great, great wrestling coach there right there at the high school and collegiate level. Nice move inside by Alford. Their top scorer is a freshman coming in. And he's now got eight in the game. Coming up on seven and a half to go. Prairie View A&M is picked to win the SWAC this year, the conference the Bulldogs play in. And that'll be a 15 foul against that'll Alabama A&M. Good. Hunter Tyson and company rolling to another win. A&M, this is the kind of game he should begin to grow in, but now it'll be the test against the better teams they face and then once they get back into ACC play, can he be a factor? They would love to be able to get seven to ten quality minutes out of him. As that ends up in an empty possession, but the Tigers cruising. They scored 54 points in the opening half of play tonight. When he's in the game, he's a designated screener. He screens, re-screens, go sits in another screen. Uh, so he's a designated screener, but he's... Uh... And you see in the man, he's far from the basket, defending right there against Houston as Hunter Tyson gets the rebound. But I wouldn't be stunned if he continues to... Get in better shape and he looks great this year in terms of his physical conditioning. Why not throw him out high defensively when you throw a zone at a team? There's a nice Hunter. feed inside and the finish by Hunter, Hunter Tyson. Yeah, he's got a seven foot body, but he's got a wingspan that's unbelievable. And he's the kind of guy who could be a real X factor defensively. That time Newman got a hand on it. By the way, four Tigers in double figures now, led by Dawes with 17, Mack has 16, and Tyson. And Jemison with 10 apiece. Dawes looking for the big man. Spinning inside on Houston. Soft touch. Can't get it to go. Scrapping for the rebound. He didn't see it. And now Houston able to get it off the floor. Hicks has it knocked away. Saved. Nearly a travel down low. The rejection by Jemison. And then T.J. Parham. And... Jemison looks like he's shaken up a little bit. Maybe a finger or a thumb. And a timeout for Brad Brownell. And as you see, a lot of pain for Trey Jemison. Coach Brownell never, never. Come back to Little John. Here in Little John Coliseum, the Clemson Tigers close out a season opening. Fun up gave us tickets to the Super Bowl. We were able to meet Sean Mendez. Verizon got me into the NFL Combine. They don't even sell tickets to this thing. Verizon knows you love live music and sport. With Jim Davis, Pete Kennedy with you back in Little John Coliseum, a Clemson team that is well on its way to a fourth consecutive victory. Tigers will head out to that tournament in Las Vegas. See some quality opponents. Be a lot of fun for the guys. I would suppose many on this Clemson team maybe have never been to Vegas. Uh, perhaps maybe not even that far out west. Paul Grindy on the court. The transfer in from Vassar. And the big fella going to back in and spin on Houston. Everybody's scoring tonight as the Tigers continue that trend. From Division Three Vassar to Power 5 Clemson. A heck of a student, from what we understand, which you would expect at Vassar, located in Poughkeepsie, New York. Deflections, and it'll stay in the Alabama a and end. Tigers will face TCU. And from downtown, that one's nothing but net. Bomb. On Sunday is when they'll play their first game, and then they play again. Tuesday against either Colorado or Wyoming. So some good tests ahead out in Las Vegas ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. I don't like to see those bounce passes on the perimeter. Or taken off the floor that time by Jalen Johnson. Alabama AM trying to get better for their next game, their home opener Monday. 
against Troy. Only been Division One for about 20 years. They claim as their most famous athletic alums, a couple of football players. John Stallworth, I think most folks have heard that name or remember the great former Steelers Hall of Fame wide receiver, and also Robert Mathis, who is more recent, played with the Indianapolis Colts. John Stallworth was on the same receiving core as Lynn Swan. And? Me with the Steelers. Brandon and uh, Benny Cunningham Benny was a tight end. Cunningham. Late great Benny Cunningham, a Seneca native, Clemson alum. I thought for a second you were going to say Ron Shanklin in his early days or Frank Lewis, but uh, you didn't dig that deep on me. I, I figured out where you were going with that. Benny Cunningham. Each team has attempted 26 field goals and a half, and as you can see, the Tigers, I think, have really been working on more things away from the basket. I get that impression. Look at Grindy with a spin move, and he's got another field goal to his credit as a Clemson Tiger as he was able to get into the scoring column earlier in a Clemson uniform. Little head fake one way and drop it on the floor going the other way. Great job. Freshman drives inside. Premier Brown, nothing doing from the outside. That one comes off too strong by Garrett Hicks scrapping on the floor and there is the fellow who's been the best of the walk-ons Wells Hogue former manager they just gave a uniform to crowd loving that move they'll love it if he can splash another rainbow but no Grindy rebound try and unable to be kept in bound by Alabama A&M's Brandon Powell Grindy was a scoring machine at Vassar, the 17th player in their program history to reach 1,000 points. Look at the drive to the basket. And almost getting it to go as McBride, but it'll head to the free throw line. That's Antonio Reynolds-Dean. Yeah, works for the post players for Clemson. It's obvious he's a teacher because he's taught these post players some offensive moves with their back to the basket. Very impressive. Rides for his free throw attempt of the night. The game in Clemson has tried just 11, now 5 out of 11 from the line. Tigers came in at 67%. And that's a number that their head coach will expect and demand to see move up into the low 70s once they get a few more games under their belt. By the way, while we have a moment, we mentioned a couple of football players from Alabama AM, and, and it's interesting, John Stallworth, the great receiver from Alabama AM, which goes against the program has become known as wide receiver U, but congrats to Tiger football players and head coach Dabo Sweeney for making the finalist list in a variety of national awards. Travis ETN today announced for the Duke Walker Award, which will go to the best running back in the nation. He's on the semifinalist list. We've got Isaiah Simmons up for the Nagurski as the best defensive player. The Tigers offensive lineman John Simmons is a finalist for the Outland Trophy. Very prestigious postseason oh, award and Dabo Sweeney no big surprise he's on the Maxwell Club's coach of the year list of 22. You think they'd give me a vote for any of those? Be tough. <laughs> be real tough. Now once the Naismith Award rolls around you'd be front and center on that. <laughs> and ETN the announcement today the overall number is impressive he's better than 1300 yards he's within about 320 of his single season program record and 10 shy of his touchdown mark from a year ago. But keep in mind, he's averaging 8.7 yards a carry. And that is not only leading the nation this year, it would be a Clemson record if he maintains it. He's one yard per carry better than anyone else in the country, and he's among the best all time in yards per carry in all of college football. And the other two guys who were in front of him on the list are non power five conference players. So, Travis Etienne, and keep in mind, Travis Etienne's had 11 carries in the fourth quarter. So it tells you that he's pretty much kicked back with the other starters and enjoying it as a spectator in most of these games. And so, granted, so that impacts the overall number. If he had more carries in the fourth quarter, it would bring down the yards per carry number. But the way he breaks tackles, he probably wouldn't be too far below eight yards per carry. But the only number they care about is, is that, that big one on the scoreboard uh, under their name at the end as we... Didn't mean to go too far deep into football in a basketball game, but I thought it was worth pointing out that, you know, probably a lot of postseason hardware and then maybe uh, one big trophy for the team, too, come early January once again. Here. 
at Clemson. Big time kind of read down seconds by upcoming. McBride there. Yeah, nice job going up and pulling it down. In traffic. Hogue, I think they're going to want to get somebody else a chance to score here. Grindy with a couple of field goals. Tries for a third. No. Good scrapping battle for the rebound. Good hustle off the bench by Mason Ellison at Alabama A&M. Partially deflected that time by Fox. Tigers will dribble it out and put away a four straight win, 87 to 51, against Alabama A&M for Brad Brownell. He is now just four shy of Cliff Ellis's all-time wins record.